Almost 90 percent of all criminal cases in America are now plea deals. And at the root of that is this cash bail system. This is insane, but you got people who cannot afford bail and are in jail before their trial. We identified 26 different crimes that are not so serious where we wanted to have a presumption that people would not be required to pay cash bail in a state where cash bail is routine. The system of cash bail there basically penalized you, not just if you were poor, but if you were working class or even some homes that had two incomes. But if you were arrested, it could even be for an old unpaid traffic ticket or a small nonviolent violation. If your bail is $1,000 or $5,000 and the criminal justice system is backed up, sometimes with thousands and thousands of cases on delay. You could end up being in jail for weeks or months or in some cases even years just because your family was having to make the horrible decision between paying rent money or paying your bail. When you have maybe 20 percent of the prison population or the jail population you know why they're in jail? For the crime of being poor. Around our country right now, there are over 400,000 people locked in cages every single night who are pre-trial, who have not been convicted of any crime. And most of those people are there because they cannot afford to purchase their way out. Starting today, the district attorney's office will no longer seek cash bail for a number of lower level offenses. Do not imprison the poor for the so-called crime of poverty. And guess what? Our county prison population started to come down twice as fast as it was coming down previously. Literally, I, I've engaged families there in Philadelphia who were sometimes deciding, do we do something criminal to be able to bail our loved one out of jail? It puts people in a position where all of a sudden they'll do anything to get out. This new cash bail policy will not only save the taxpayers money in the poorest of the 10 largest cities in the United States by allowing low-level defendants to maintain their freedom, but it will begin to level the economic and racial playing field that exists in our courts and in our court system. Millions of people are now pleading guilty because prosecutors, particularly district attorneys all over the country are saying, listen, we'll let you out now on time I'm served, you just say you're guilty. Well, hell, if you've been in there for something you didn't do, but you've been in there for weeks or months or sometimes years, there's a man that I just wrote about in New Orleans who's been in jail for eight years and has not yet been convicted. You know, we claim to have in the Pledge of Allegiance a system calling for justice for all, but one would be very naive to believe that was the case. We have a system of justice for the wealthy, and if you have the money and the good lawyers, my God, there's almost anything you can commit and get away with. And then we have another system for the poor and working people of this country. If you're wealthy in America, cash bail is never a problem. You normally will get out that day. Krasner has done several things to really target the cash bail system right away. Part of what makes that challenging is that there's a cash bail industry. There are entire businesses and corporations whose livelihood is to facilitate this complex cash bail system. They have lobbyists in cities and counties and states all over the country. They're fighting to make sure this cash bail system continues. We live in a bubble where we assume that the way we do things, it's done this way all over the world. I I've had trouble even trying to explain to other people around the world what cash bail is. Like they can't comprehend that someone is having, before they've been found guilty, could be in jail for weeks or months or years because they can't afford to pay a ransom. In essence, that's what it is. But what Larry is saying is whatever our alternatives need to be to cash bail, let's be smart and build them. People have to start seeing working in a prosecutor's office or being a prosecutor as being an agent of change. 